Hello guys, in this video I will show you how to use the new React Starter Kit from Laravel 12 or in fact how to write the code after you install that Laravel Starter Kit. So we will create this project tasks list to do list CRUD with Laravel, Inertia, React, TypeScript and ShadCN. So if you want to learn any of this, this will be kind of the crash course. Even if you haven't used React or TypeScript, I will try to explain it in this video based on practical example, along with fundamentals that you need to know. And this will be a two-part video series here on YouTube today and tomorrow, both videos around 15 minutes. And these 30 minutes are shortened video version of the new course that I've launched on Laravel Daily. So if you go to the courses list, in the list, the newest course is this. React Laravel Starter Kit CRUD Project. So on YouTube videos, I will cover the first part of the course, the fundamentals, the fundamentals of CRUD. But in the course, we go deeper on this topic. In the course, I explain more about the theory behind. I give the links to the related tutorials and in the text form course, you have code snippets, which you can copy easily. Also, you'll have a link to GitHub repository. And also there's the second part of the course with more features like file upload field, pagination and stuff like that. So this is the project from the course with more features. And the course is available for premium members of Laravel Daily. But today I'm launching a discount week of Laravel 12. Here on top, you can see the main information. And if you click here, you land on membership page. And this is the prices for the next week. With the coupon Laravel 12, which is actually applied automatically, you get 40% of yearly or lifetime membership. I'm doing such promotion every spring with new Laravel version. So this is the coupon for Laravel 12, which is symbolically starting on March 12th. And I usually start such campaign when I upgrade enough courses for the new Laravel version. So I think it's a good start. We have upgraded Laravel API course, new React course, also Laravel 12 for beginners. Also, there's a course on Tailwind 4 updated. Soon we will update Livewire 3 course with a new starter kit. Then we have prepared Flutter 3 with Laravel API course for mobile in upcoming months. So exciting times and this week you can get the discount on the membership. Now let's go to the video and create the scrud on top of React Starter Kit. So we install a new Laravel 12 project and choose React Starter Kit with all other things as defaults. It will also ask if we want to run npm commands and we choose yes. Okay, and now if we load that page of react.test, we have Laravel 12 homepage with login and register links. And if we register, I will use fake filler Chrome extension and I'm using SQLite by default. We are here in the dashboard. That's it. That's the installation. And the default starter kit on top of existing structure and dashboard provides the menu item settings in the bottom left corner by default, but we will move it to the top later in this video. And here you can manage your password, appearance, the theme and the profile. This is all based on Laravel Inertia, React.js, TypeScript and Shad CN components. Now let's briefly take a look inside of that default code by starter kit. I always start analyzing any Laravel project from routes. So this is the routes of that starter kit. So inertia is used here for welcome page and for the dashboard. And then Laravel controllers are used inside of other routes files, which is settings and also auth for registration, forgot password and other stuff with auth. Now, if we take a look at any controller in the settings, for example, we have profile controller, we go inside. And again, the rendering is powered by inertia and we load react components here. Now let's take a look inside of that react component of profile. And if you're not that familiar with react, it's pretty heavy and pretty big. If you look at it for the first time, so I won't comment everything, but you need to understand a few things about React inside of that starter kit. Any React component consists of basically two parts, import of components and libraries that you need, then maybe some definitions and then export the result of that React component with also some methods and variables inside. But basically return is the template part, the HTML part with divs and tailwind classes with React components on top. So there's heading small, settings layout input part of that comes from chat cn library other part from inertia and some other components and then another thing you need to understand is the extension of that file tsx by default react components have jsx extension but in this case starter kits use typescript 
This is optional and even if you use Laravel Starter Kit, then you need to create more components. You can do that without TypeScript, but the default components have TSX extension for TypeScript and we will talk about TypeScript a bit later in this video. So yeah, that's the general overview of what Starter Kits give us. Now let's try to customize the layout and some of the components and visuals on this page. Let's start with something simple and change the text of Laravel Starter Kit. Actually, I'll zoom it in a bit. So let's change this text and logo. And this is done inside of two files. There's resources.js, components, and then there's app logo TSX. Again, TypeScript, although it doesn't use TypeScript specifically in this file. Another practice with React, we import something and then we export the HTML with some components, including this one. And then if you scroll to the right, let's change Laravel starter kit to React tasks. We will have tasks crud. So we change that and then we need to run either npm run build or I will run npm run dev in the background so it will refresh automatically on every change. And now if I refresh our page, we have React tasks here. Also, we can change any Tailwind classes here. So for example, text may be text blue 800, we save and the page looks like this, blue text. If you want to change the logo itself, it's SVG and you may change it to any other SVG. For that, we open another component app logo icon TSX and replace SVG with other SVG, which I had prepared. We save and we have Laravel daily logo instead of Laravel official logo. Or you may change the logo colors. If we go back to app logo TSX, there's Tailwind list of classes and we may change that. I've prepared that behind the scenes with this. So added more colors, change that to blue 100 and so on. And now we have blue color with some effects like these ones. This is just an example. You may choose other CSS classes from Tailwind. My point is to show you where to customize that in what files and then use your imagination on how you want to do that exactly. Next, let's try to change the color of active sidebar menu item. And this is where we land in resources, CSS, app CSS, where we have a lot of styles already prepared for us by starter kit, but we can override them. For example, we have root with all those colors using OKLCH OK colors, but we need specifically sidebar accent and we'll replace that with other colors. And now we have other colors for active menu item. But also if you're making such modifications to app CSS, don't forget there's also dark mode colors. So you need to change those here as well. Now, as I promised, let's move the sidebar to the top. Laravel starter kits allow you to change the layout very easily. So there's a file resources.js layouts app layout TSX, which imports the template from app sidebar layout but there's another layout. In resources.js layouts app, you can see two files here, app header layout and app sidebar layout. So all we need to do is change that to app header layout. And that's it. Our page is on top with settings page here on the top right. And the final customization I will show you is how to change the color of that active menu item here. This is defined in the file resources JS components app header TSX. If we scroll down or in fact, if we look for BG black background black and we can replace that div with any CSS classes again that we want. For example, let's change that background black to background blue 600. And this is our visual result. So all in all with customizations, you need to understand a few things. You need to locate to usually some TSX component. Some of those things will be customizable in the JS layer. So you may take a look at components if they allow that, or you need to change Tailwind classes in those TSX files or customize the CSS directly in resources, CSS, app CSS file. Now, after we analyzed what's inside of starter kit, let's create our own functions. And first we will create a new menu item called tasks for now, just as a menu item and react component page without the model, without the data for now. So for example, dashboard, if we take a look at routes web, it's inertia render dashboard. It's a TSX file and we can mimic copy paste the same behavior for now without any controllers. We will add them later, but just copy paste, for example, tasks and inertia render the component tasks index. I will call it. I prefer to do it uppercase, but this is your personal preference and name it tasks index. And now let's go to our dashboard and do file save as 
and save it as we are in resources JS pages and we need to change that to directory tasks and we call it index TSX. And now let's remove everything that we don't specifically need and remain with just plain design. So placeholder pattern, I'm not sure what that is. We don't need that. We don't need types for now, but we do need app layout and head. We don't need breadcrumbs. We will work on them later in this course. So with app layout, we don't need breadcrumbs. We do need dashboard, but change the title to tasks list and div class name. Let's remove everything and let's put just the div inside tasks list will be here. That's it. Let's delete everything else. And that's it. This is our react component. And one more thing we need to rename. It's not the dashboard. The main function should be the same as the file name. So now we have the react component. We have the route to it. The menu item is the next thing. Remember, we already saw that page app header TSX when we customized this underlined style. So this is app header TSX and we need to add the item on top and here there is an array list of main nav items and we do it like this title tasks URL tasks icon. We can import icons, other icons in this list. So for example, here we have layout grid. And for example, let's open and for example, choose briefcase icon. And then we use that instead of layout grid briefcase icon. That's it. No underlining anymore. And let's refresh our page. And there we go. We have tasks. And if we click it, not only is it underlined, but also we have react component showing our static page. Now let's generate the actual database structure and controllers for tasks list and tasks resource. This is the command make model task with a lot of flags, migration, factory controller, which would be resource controller and our uppercase for form requests. So this is the list of files generated and I will show you what's inside. I will fill them in behind the scenes because this video is not about Laravel fundamentals. I'm pretty sure you know them. Okay, so quickly, I will add just one field to the database for demonstration task name. This is the same in the migrations. Also, I create a task factory to seed the fake data, which we'll use right away in the database seeder to seed 10 tasks. And this is the database layer. In fact, we can run PHP Artisan Migrate Seed right away. It should seed 10 tasks. And if we take a look at our database table, we have tasks with 10 records. Now it's time to show them in the table. So I've created that task controller with very simple logic, just inertia render task all. And then other methods are also prepared with very simple CRUD logic and rendering React components, which are not created yet. We have tasks index created, this one, but static for now. And we will add a route differently now. Instead of just route get for inertia, we have route resource with a full controller. Now let's change our index TSX from this to show actual table. And we will take the table from ShadCN components. ShadCN is a component library which is used by Laravel starter kits, both React and Vue. Vue has a separate kind of a fork of ShadCN for Vue specifically because originally ShadCN is for React. And all you need to do to use ShadCN in Laravel, in fact, it has installation instruction for Laravel, which is very quick, which is exactly what we did in this video. New application with React, then you install the component you wish with NPX, and then you use that like this in your React component. So import and then use like this. So let's try to do that with table. We go to components, scroll down, and there's a table. If we scroll down, installation is the same as in the documentation. NPX, we copy and we run that command. Okay, cool. Then the usage is we import many things from that components UI table. I will comment that in a minute. For now, let's just copy paste here. And this is the thing. See that components UI table, the same thing in the terminal components UI table. So what ShadCN does is downloading your table, but not in vendor or node modules, but it is public in resources JS. And this is one of the main benefits and advantages of ShadCN that your components are public. So you can not only use them in other React pages and components, but also customize their styling in the underlying component. Let me show you. So we'll use that table soon. But if we click that components UI table TSX, this is the source code and it's not in node modules or vendor. So you can add CSS classes here. 
you can change the behavior of T body, T footer, row or column, stuff like that. Everything is public and exported then as table cell, table caption. So this is the export of that component, which we import into our component like this. You may import not all the components. For example, in our case, we'll not use table caption. And also I personally prefer semicolon at the end. And now let's actually use it here in the table. And to save you time, I've pasted it from my notes. So look at the code table, table header, table row. For now, hard coded table row and table cells. These are not HTML components. These are all imported from here. As you can see, it's not underlined anymore because we have actually used it. And now if we refresh our page, we have this table. So this is our hard coded task list with action column, which is not filled yet, but we have successfully used the chat CN visual component for the table. And this is the end of the first part of this video. I decided to split that into 15 minute videos to be a bit shorter. Tomorrow is the second part where we will finish this CRUD in full. But if you don't want to wait or you prefer text form, reminder that this is a course on Laravel daily, which you can get in full now without waiting for tomorrow. And also this week, there's a 40% discount. And see you guys in tomorrow's video.